Okay, so now we're entering our last uh, type of um, research study. And this is the relational studies. Um, and we're going to talk later on in the lecture about the different types of studies and uh, some of the nomenclature and terminology. But first, I kind of wanted to give you a preview and give you a little context where this came from. Um, I was driving home one day and I listened, listened to NPR, and they mentioned uh, this compression cooling article, which you can see right here. And it was a really quick snippet, maybe 30 seconds. And it said that this researcher found that compression clothing, not the magic bullet for performance. And I don't know about you, but you know, I drive home or I'm uh, you know, in the park uh, going for a jog and I see people wearing their compression stockings on their calves, they're wearing sleeves, they got water bottles, they got all this gear and stuff on. And I've always wondered where, why are they wearing all this kind of stuff? What's the benefit to it? And especially when you, when you consider this stuff costs a lot of money if you get I guess the top stuff. Um, I mean, we're talking forty-five dollars for a pair of socks, and I mean, my socks last me, you know, however long they last me. Then I destroy them, so I can't justify myself paying forty-five dollars. But I'm not an elite athlete, so maybe it does have some sort of physiological or or a benefit to it. But as you can see, the NPR uh, snippet said, "Well, no, it doesn't." So. When I got to office, I, I went to NPR and I actually uh, went to this link and it, it linked to the research article, which I thought was great. The problem was this. So I, I went and I tried to pull up the research article. And um, so here's the research article. And the problem is it only linked it to this abstract. And I went to the um, International Journal of Sport Physiolog Physiology and Performance. Unfortunately, UNCG doesn't have a subscription to it. And we went to the publisher themselves, it would have cost me $25 just to get this one article. So we're going to have to deal with the abstract, but you, you can still get at least the idea of what the article is about. And, and the key part is right here at the bottom of the abstract. There were no differences in VO2 or kinematic variables between the control group and the compression stocking trials at any speed. So what this study basically showed or suggested was that compression stockings don't give you the performance uh, that you... that they are touted as giving. Well, that's only one study. Um, and as we know from prior units, uh, it's always good to try to find more than one study if you're really going to make an evidence-based clinical decision. Well, the best way to get a collection of studies is doing what? Right, a systematic review or a meta-analysis. Those are at the top of our research paradigm and our research uh, pyramid. So let's try to find a systematic review or a meta-analysis. That's what I did. So I ran a quick search for it. And I came up with, I hope this is the real one, there it is, compression stockings and aerobic exercise, a meta-analysis, perfect. Let's get all the sources together, we'll go through them, and this will give us a good starting point. Not so fast. We already know what tool we want to use when we do a meta-analysis or a systematic review. We want to use the Prisma. It has a lot of good guidelines. It's not an assessment tool, but at least lets us know how we put together our systematic reviews and our meta-analysis and make sure that the content is at least there. Well, here's the problem. So I'm reading their abstract here, and you can read with me. The aim of this study was to conduct a meta-analysis, blah, blah, blah. And they said studies were found by using search engines, Google and Galileo. Now, reviewing back from our prior units, how many databases are out there that's related to kinesiology and this type of thing? There's dozens of them out there, and they use Google and Galileo when they could use a ton of different search engines. So automatically, in my mind, that's a red flag or at least a yellow flag that maybe this meta-analysis does not have the, the content that I need it to have. But we can scroll through, we can read more about it, etc. They go through inclusion, exclusion criteria. And if for nothing else, we should remember from our prior unit that there should be some sort of flow chart, that they should talk about how many articles they found, exclusion criteria, and how they peeled each one out, etc., and what their final end was. You don't see that at all here. So they really didn't set up this meta-analysis very well. And when I get down to the bottom, like you don't even know how many studies are being seen. You're looking for the big table, the big chart, etc., and all we have here is this is it. This is it. For a meta-analysis, they only have 24 citations, and out of that, they only include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is what I'm talking about. I should use this example back in the prior unit, but I just found it. This is what I'm talking about when you talk about um, is a meta-analysis what worth to read? It doesn't have the content you need. In my opinion, no. And by the way, huge red flag. They spelled articles wrong. 
How do you forget the A in articles? Typo, editor, no, that can't happen. So you look at these studies and look at the time differences. Basically, they have 2007, 2011, one 2008. The, 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 the years are, are gapped and it, it looks really weird. So this is a red flag yellow flag to me. So I basically dumped this and did my own search looking for basically randomized trials to see if we can get something. So the first article I found, I'm going to scroll up. Sorry about that. The first article I found um, was effects of compression stockings on running economy kinematics and performance in runners. That's exactly what I was looking for. And you can read through the abstract. And basically what it is, is they set up a control group, a treatment group, and they did a whole bunch of different variables uh, to look at compression stockings. And the reason I'm bringing these articles up is because I want you to, to we're going to, I'm going to kind of show you some of the statistics. And these are statistics that you're going to have to come more familiar with when you look at these type of relational studies. So we can scroll through and see all the variables all the setup, here are your results. But for this particular section, what we're really concerned with, we really want to focus on is the statistical analysis because that's what we're going to talk about, right? So you can see right there, here's the statistical analysis, um, the software they used, et cetera. And right there, you can see what they ran. They ran analysis of variance, repeated measures. So we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit in uh, the lecture. Um, you can see uh, what they set their significance level at, a 95% confidence interval uh, in 0.05. And as we go for the results, there's their p-value. You can see um, all this kind of stuff is already included in here. But if you want to skip to the end, you just want to read the discussion, the main findings was that wearing compression stockings lowered percent heart rate max during time limit running at a competitive velocity, blah, blah, blah. So basically, this did help. The compression stockings did help. And so you read a little bit further and they said, our findings are different than those reported in the literature. The study of Ali reported similar times in a lower but non-significant. So the study by Ali was different than this current study. So what do you do? Well, you pick up the Ali study and there it is. So you went and I dug for this study and same concept, same idea. And again, if you scroll down through here, you can see their statistical setup is coming up, coming up. There's statistical analysis. There's your ANOVA, one-way, two-way repeated measures right there. There's their p-value right there. They even ran a correlation, which we'll talk about. And when you go through their results, all their stuff, you come down here, and I love when they do this. They give you a practical application section. Um, this is the first study that compares it, and wearing GS had no effect on 10-meter time trial. So, or 10-kilometer time trial. So, two studies both using uh, randomized control variables and that type of relational study, they came up with different, um, different results. It's you as a consumer to then put this together and determine uh, which study, is, which study is, is going to factor more into your thought process. And there are maybe are there some research questions that there's just not enough data out there to make an informed decision yet. But this is just one example to kind of set the stage for what we're going to be going through uh, in this section, to set the stage that we're going to be looking at controls, interventions, and a whole bunch of new statistical, te statistical tests. Now, just as a, a quick heads up, I'm going to go over a handful of statistical analysis in this class, in this section. I'm not going to bog us down with it. You're going to find with some of these articles that they are running these unique, unusual type of tests that I have no idea about statisticians will. Um, so if you see a test that you're not familiar with, don't be afraid. Just look it up, find, a, you know, Google it, whatever, and read a little bit more about the test. There are a lot of new statistical tests out there that uh, a lot of researchers don't know about, and, and, and you might have to do a little background on it. But I'm going to expose you guys to sort of the basic ones and how to read through these type of uh, relational studies. So without that, we're going to go move forward and we're going to go on to the lecture.